stage of the season. And this was a tough game today. They've had a tough game in Europe. They travelled. They come back. They looked a bit leggy early on. Yeah. But they just got a gear. And more importantly, they got that quality that champions have got now where they can win a game when they're not at their vintage best. So it looks ominous for the rest of the league. I think it's done for this year. And they've, they've, they've raised the bar again, like all great sides. They've, they, Liverpool have, have won the title and they've come back and responded. This is a great side we're looking at. And today is also an example of belief as well. When you're there in the table and you're top and you, you haven't lost for 20 matches and you, you get a team equaliser against you, you just go again because you just believe you're going to win every game. You just you know the way they pass the ball, the way they the way they just apply pressure on teams and keep it. That's the important thing with this team is they, they, they just keep it on you. They yeah. move it, they move it, they shift it from side to side. There's no respite. They're West Ham, I feel for the players today because they put in a hell of a shift. Yeah. All of them. Every single one of them West Ham players left, will leave that pitch and they've given everything. They played well. They've matched them just missed by yeah. a little bit and they're going to go in with nothing. And they should be proud of their performance because it was excellent. And in case you're wondering whether this man still has some love for West Ham, he was standing right here and the header at the very end there, that just <laughs> he was on his knees, he was in the air. You thought it was an equaliser, didn't you? I did, I did. It was a great <laughs> chance. It was great. And actually, to be fair to West Ham, it's not very often that you get beaten and it reinforces your European credentials. But you look at that team now and you see a solidity. Mm. You see, again, belief from them. You, you get the sense with every passing game, Europe is a real potential now. Yeah, it's definitely a potential. And I think David Moyes said before, that let's not, listen, we don't need to throw all our eggs into this basket let's just keep doing what we're doing and this the team's got great personality you look at them right at the last the best chance of the game was West Ham pushing forward against this great Man City team they matched them up they've got legs they've got quality the subs that come on made made an impact there's, there's so much to be positive about and I said they leave this stadium losing yeah. but their stature growing because I, f I think they, they, they this is a game where they'll look back and go right we, we, we matched them we, ju we just missed out on that little bit we haven't got the quality but they've got something, they've got structure there. And it's, it's a good time for West Ham to be top players. And for you look at this Man City bench today and you look at it and you look, you've got Mendy, Silva, Rodrigo, Laporte, Jesus. Not just international footballers, world-class yeah. players. And you'll need them with these games coming You're up. They can now them. chop and change in the Premier League with that, with that gap. And, and today's a day where I think Pep's put forward, this is a good game for Aguero at home. You might not see him in the next two games. He might come off the bench, yeah. but then he'll get stronger. Because he, he was the only player today who looked... He looked a bit off it, and rightly so, his four months out. But you throw him into the mix with a run-in, and you've got to say that they're favourites, certainly in, in the three competitions in England they're in, and I would argue maybe Bayern Munich have had a little wobble since the World, World yeah. uh, uh, Club Championship, so they could be favourites in all. It'll be an, if they do that, it will be the greatest achievement of wow. any English club. Wouldn't it be? John, 20 wins in a row, and they made you work for it, even if, right down to the final seconds. Yeah, they did. Um, a lot of credit to West Ham. We knew what they were going to come and do and um, how they've been playing recently. The position in the table, it speaks for itself. I think, um, yeah, I give a lot of credit to them and, and, you know, gave us a great game today. And as you said, we had to fight right into the last few minutes and they made it difficult. So um, really satisfied. I think at half time we were a bit deflated of conceding late in that in the first half. Um, weren't at, at free flowing football like we we used to, I suppose, in in the recent weeks, but that's that's again how they set up against us, and um, I think we sh we showed great character at, from half time and in in, in during the second half. And if the strikers aren't scoring, then did the defenders step up and do it? <laughs> try, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try and chip in, and um, you know everyone's out there and working hard, and some some days it doesn't come off for the for the forwards, and today me and Ruben chipped in and. Um, I think that's that's part of um, us being such a good team and such a collective in big games and in important games. Everyone chips in, or maybe sometimes the um, person that that you don't expect. Maybe me and Ruben today it was that, and you know, just glad to get three points and and keep this winning run going. Yeah, you're right. It shows the depth and the quality throughout the side. But Ruben Diaz has, has been remarkable this season, stepping in alongside you. He's been a, just bedrock isn't it? Yeah um, I said it numerous times but um, you can only give credit to him for, for moving to uh, moving countries new club the way he's played straight away um, not just with me with with uh, Aime Eric whoever's played um, he's been outstanding and that's that's just down to him and, and massive credit to him. Yeah, and I've always been a big fan but even I was like losing is he ever going to get there but then you look at his age he's, he's in his mid-twenties this is when they ripen centre half. This is when he's learned, he's made all these mistakes. He knows what's required. A young man's coming next to him, Ruben Diaz, 
and it sort of jolted him because yeah. Ru- he's the finished article. It's very rare. You, a player that young is the finished article like Diaz is. It's a great bit of recruitment from Man City, and he's he's put them together. And they played 16 games together and they conceded three goals. And that's just giving a platform for everyone else just to go and do their stuff. And that together, I mean, it, they look unstoppable. The last 10 minutes of West Ham are front in the box. Here, here you, if, you, if you look at them here, they're dealing with Antonio, probably one of the hardest players to mark. Positionally, they were just, they were just on him. They were the boss of the situation. This is early on in the game. John Stones, you know, putting out a message, winning his first header. It was, but it was this, these situations I was most impressed with. You look at when you're when you're in them situations, you're a midfielder, and they're going to throw things in the box, and you you have someone like a John Terry there or a Rio Ferdinand. It just you just you just calm. You just know they're going to do it, and it's been a long time. I say since Vincent Company, when when them Man City players, for all their great play and free flowing forward, they've had players at the back there where they know they're going to deal with situations like that. This is the first half, blocking the ball, getting their bodies in the line, doing the the, the, the stuff that here I love this. Look, they're queuing up. They both want to block it. It's unbelievable. And they're both sort of pushing each other. And we've talked about the great central pairings, you know, the Vidic, Ferdinand, Terry, Gallas, Pallister and Bruce, the greats. I mean, listen, it's early days for these two, but yeah. what a start they've had. And the fact that they're 25 and 21 oh, is yeah. unbelievable. And you, I look at the bench and I look at Laporte and, and you think, and then we start talking about strength You've got a feel depth. for Laporte, by the way. What a player he is. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, like I said, it, it's, 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 it's unnerving for the rest of the league how good this is, and not just the team. Manchester United will reportedly have to pay striker Edinson Cavani £1.75 million if they do not extend his contract due to expire in the summer by another season. The 34-year-old moved on a free transfer from PSG on transfer deadline day in October, signing a one-year deal with the option of a further year. But if the Red Devils opt not to enact that option the Uruguayan, who has scored seven goals for United in all competitions this season would be due £1.75 million, pounds, 2 million euros, in compensation. Old Gunnar Solskjaer and Executive Vice Chairman Ed Woodward will have to decide whether to extend Cavani's deal, with the United manager said to be keen on keeping the Uruguay international for the 2021-22 season. While on the pitch he has popped up with important goals such as a match-winning double at Southampton in November he has also been a leader off the pitch. Cavani has supported United's younger batch of forwards in training too, including Marcus Rashford, Anthony Marshall and Mason Greenwood. Yet Solskjaer is keen to see how the forward recovers from his latest muscle injury before deciding on new terms. I've been impressed by him. He's really gelled in the group, and we'll sit down and speak with him in the near future to see his plans and our plans," Solskjaer said last week. Cavani has scored seven goals in 24 appearances in all competitions for United, the last of which came against Everton on February 6. The Uruguayan's six league goals this season make him United's third top scorer, behind Bruno Fernandes and Rashford. But he missed United's win against Newcastle last week with a muscular injury and is unlikely to feature at Chelsea on Sunday.